first, I, I'd like to say thank you very much to Books and Books for in, inviting us. This is an honor and a pleasure to be here. This is a, truly a wonderful store, and, and thank you for having us. When Kevin and I first started this book, I'll be honest, I really didn't know much about Che Guevara. I knew the image on the t-shirts. Growing up in New York City in the, in the late 1970s, uh, a lot of people wore Che t-shirts. His image was spray painted on walls all over New York City with the expression, Che lives. And um, he cut a handsome figure. He, he was, you know, with the scraggly beard and those piercing eyes and the black beret that was just tilted a little bit and the, the star on the beret. He looked like a revolutionary. And his message seemed to be to somebody who just looked at the T-shirts and looked at the sayings, somebody who was you know, for the people, power for the people, if everyone remembers that expression from, from the 70s. Fast forward to 2010. Um, Kevin and I had become friends because we both worked at the Associated Press, and Kevin and I both have a love for military affairs and military stories, and um, we've reported extensively on the military and written about the military. And one day Kevin said to me, I, you know, there was a mission back in 1967 in which the Green Berets went down to Bolivia to train Bolivians to go hunt Che Guevara. And I said, yeah, you know, okay, um, but who is Che Guevara again? <laughs> you know, is, is, he, is he relevant? And, um, you know, I was, I was being, you know, a little sarcastic, but he said, no, it really, it's, it, you know, why don't we just take a look at it? Why don't we do our due diligence, see what's been written about it, see what they did? Because over the years, there's been so many rumors about Che, what happened to Che, who he was, um, how he died. And we decided that, you know, let's, let's at least look at what has been written about the Green Beret's role in the, in the mission in 1967 in Bolivia. So we started doing our due diligence, which is, you know, reading books, going online, um, and just seeing what had been written. And what we found was there had been dozens and dozens and dozens of books written about Che and about Castro and about, you know, politics. But every time the Bolivia mission, Che's Bolivia mission was mentioned, the Green Berets were maybe a paragraph or or two in every book. And there have been some tremendous books written about Che, including John you know, Anderson's book and um, a whole host of others. But again, it's always been kind of a footnote in those books. And we decided at that point, you know what, let's at least look at you know, records, army records, go into the archives and see you know, what exactly was their role. Because again, with the rumors, you know, there were some people who believed that the Green Berets actually went in there and killed them. They believed that the CIA was in B Bolivia and they actually went into the jungles and, and killed Che. So let's separate the fact from fiction. And that's what Kevin and I really do best as journalists, really uncovering the truth, exposing wrongdoing. And, and so at that point, we, d we went in and we looked at all the documents and records and started talking to some of the guys who were actually on the mission in 1967. And we quickly discovered that they played a pivotal role, but not like most people thought. They actually went down to Bolivia, a small team, and they took basically these Bolivians who were campesinos, who, who, were, who were farmers, who, who were peasants, who many had never even held a gun before, and they actually trained them, turned them into this fighting unit that went into the jungles and hunted Che and eventually captured him. And at that point, we realized that we, we had a story, one that hadn't been told. As, as you know, being in this, in this store, historical figures, there are, there are dozens of books about historical figures. How many books come out? every year about Lincoln and Washington and Teddy Roosevelt and military leaders. The one thing you want to do as a journalist, as a writer, is advance that story, take it in a different direction, take that small piece and show readers what really happened in a, in a, in a given time period. And that's what Kevin and I decided to do with this. 
we decided that we were going to drop readers in Bolivia in 1967. We weren't going to start the story with Che on his motorcycle trip in 1952 going throughout Latin America where he discovers horrific poverty and he changes his course from being a doctor to a revolutionary. We weren't going to take you in the Sierra Maestra Mountains where he's fighting alongside Castro to overthrow Batista. What we wanted to do was drop you in Bolivia in 1967, show you what Bolivia was like, what the United States policy was like, why we feared Chase so much at that particular point. And I think, Kevin, you can fill us in from here. Oh, one thing before Kevin starts is anytime anybody has a question, please feel free to interrupt us. Don't, don't wait to the end. Just pepper us with questions. When we initially started this narrative, we really were going to look at Shea as a point of view character. We thought he might be an interesting way. Um, we were picking out people to sort of drive the, the story, and we thought, well, Shea obviously has to be one. And, uh, and that was a struggle because there's so much written about him. I mean, the, the Shea reading list that I had about him was, I don't know, 12, 15 books. The books that we had uh, initially on the Green Berets and the intelligence guys was uh, three, two or three. And essentially what we did is, my, and my wife, I, I got to give her credit for this, she said, well, why don't you just leave him out and just focus on, on everybody else? And, and what we realized was the story really was that this is, this is a story about guys forgotten by history. And they're forgotten by history in the narrative that's been written, but they're also forgotten by history even in Bolivia. I mean, it's the Shea Trail when you go to Bolivia. It, che Guevara came to Bolivia to overthrow the government, and it's his trail. None of the Bolivians get any credit. They're not looked at. Uh, the, obviously, the Green Berets, just because of the sensitivity of the mission, they, they aren't, aren't a part of it. But um, So that struck us initially is, is, wait a second, maybe he isn't the point of view character. Because if you, if you know anything about the mission, and obviously I hope you guys read the book, as you learn more about the mission, it didn't go so well. I mean, he really wasn't um, what the legend had him. What the, the coverage, if, if you read the, the news clippings at the time, really had it built him into this super guerrilla with a 500-man army, and he was poised to take over all of Bolivia. And, and in fact, it, it just really wasn't the case. So what we found was the more we focused on the legend, the more we focused on, in 1967, what people believed he was doing and less about what he was doing, the better it became. The better it, beca it showed the urgency that a lot of the main characters that you're going to meet as we kind of go through this a little bit, um, you could understand why when they get to Bolivia, they're legitimately scared of what Che Guevara is going to try to do there. And, and really, what made him such a, such a threat to American policymakers and, and to the Bolivians at the time was, one, his char uh, charisma. And I, th I think that it's undeniable that he has a certain charisma about him. I mean, the fact that Urban Outfitters has posters and t-shirts to this day that, that people still buy. And, and I have a, have a buddy of mine who, who showed up one day with a, a Che Guevara t-shirt on. And he said, I said, hey, do you know anything about Che? And at that, that time, I knew very little about him. I knew, you know, not about a thumbnail, but I knew who he was. And he said, nah, man, he just looks cool. <laughs> and so it's undeniable that, that there is a certain, you know, sizzle to him. But what he was trying to do when he got to Bolivia was, was pretty simple. Uh, he wanted to create a thousand Vietnams. You know, at the time, the United States was involved in the Vietnam War, and his goal was, okay, look, we can do this. You can do it in Southeast Asia, and we can sure as heck do it in uh, in Latin America as well. And we're going to do it, start it in Bolivia because it's right in the middle of the neighborhood. And then we're just going to export this thing once we it works out. And that was sort of when he went, showed up in Bolivia. That was what he was trying to do. And so what we tried to do is tap into that because, as far as the CIA was concerned, and as far as American policymakers were concerned, and it's sure, surely. It's, sure as Barrientos, the president of Bolivia, was concerned, he was going to not only do that, but do it well, and it was going to be a big problem. So as, as, you, as, we, as you read the book, you have to take the assumption that not only is he going to do this, but he's also being doing a very good job of it. So as it, what we found f what was really funny is when you read, and we're reporters, so we understand what it's like on a breaking news event, how many times you hear things and things come out. I mean, I'll, I'm sure all of you guys followed the Boston bombing, right? I mean, that was a, a textbook modern breaking news story. Obviously, in the 67, it was a little slower, but you still had this idea of a lot of misinformation. And so 
uh, I'm going to have Mitch come up here again real quick and talk a little bit about the, the main guy, uh, uh, Major Pappy Shelton, who leads the Green Berets down here. But when he gets the mission.